Hi, come on in. <laughs> Hi, I'm Daria and this is Yanuab headquarters and I'm going to give you a little tour of our lab in Dnipro, Ukraine during the war. Uh, so our lab is downtown Dnipro and we kind of have two main rooms and we have a hall and a little bathroom with a shower, which is a perk for those who remember our old place. And this is kind of an office, kitchen, chill area. And here we just have my record player, some books, the code breaker, of course. There's some food. Uh, we have a sink, finally, because uh, last time we did not have it. We had to fill the water all the time because we had like a tank with water and that was really annoying. So now we have an actual functioning sink, even with hot water, which is a privilege. And here we have also coffee making and teapots, so it's comfortable for everyone in the team and they can just chill and join. Uh, of course, microwave for preparing the agar media for bacteria and uh, of course not for food use, never. Uh, here I have some posters with uh, scientists and of course Rosalind Franklin, uh, the woman who discovered the structure of DNA and many of you will notice that our logo is uh, picture number 53 that she took of uh, DNA. So it's kind of a DNA if you cut it and you look at this from a top view. Uh, that's, that's her and um, yeah and I just wanted to pay her tribute because Francis Crick and James Watson stole all her job and they got the Nobel Prize and she did not. And that's a pretty sad story, but I'm glad people are talking about it. So just wanted to tribute her. Uh, here we have just uh, whiteboards. We have some uh, equipment for podcasts, for video and stuff. Um, this is a table I made from a door. Uh, I had this door laying uh, in my garage uh, at my parents' place. And I always, always wanted to make a, a table out of it. And uh, I did not have any money when I was doing a lab, so uh, I, I would just make stuff all the time because uh, tables are expensive, especially when you're a broke student from Dnipro. So yeah, I just got a glass, put it on top, put some legs and wheels, and if you need to, you can slide this table out. For example, if you have like a lab meeting or we have a lot of people who are doing experiments, we just put this table like on top and you can do experiments. And because it's glass, it's really easy to clean if you spill any bacteria or any chemicals. And here's kind of like an office, a podcasting area uh, for streaming to a stream from here. And uh, here we have kind of like a futon because first of all, there's a curfew uh, in Ukraine right now, so you cannot be on the streets from midnight till 5 a.m. So if someone needs to spend the night, they can just, uh, you know, uh, make a bed and it's pretty comfy and I sleep here all the time. Of course, Ukrainian flag. And so this is just like a chill zone uh, where we hang out uh, and try to get ready for work. And this is lab zone. Before entering, I have Stanley Kubrick's basic training. Uh, I saw it and I decided this is a great training and I'm just gonna use these rules for every newbies, uh, for all the new people that come to lab. So kind of like safety uh, rules when you use a lab. And it's like, it, it applies to every lab. Like if you open, close it, if you turn it on, turn it off and et cetera, et cetera. So, and here we walk into the lab zone. We can start from here. I just have this custom made shelf. Uh, we, uh, my dad had a lot of uh, timber laying in his garage and we just made this. It's kind of not very sturdy, but yeah, of course we did not want to spend money on uh, stuff like this when you can spend money on regions and science stuff. So yeah, we also made it. And here we just have some glassware, some stuff for filming, some storage, uh, bipeds and stuff. Here we have chemicals. No, trypsin, everything needed for molecular biology, microbiology, DNA, mini preps, uh, some stuff for microscopy, uh, and, you know, basic glassware. Most of it I do not use. I use most of this stuff, you know, for making media and etc. And here we have equipment. I have three PCR machines. This is the first one I got. Uh, it's really old. Uh, it's covered in dust and but yeah i keep it it's like my it's the first pcr machine i bought and i was very proud of it 
and uh, I it's not like it's not good it's it's a bad PCR machine but it's super heavy it's super hard to use it's 110 volts so I had to use a transformer to use it because we have tw 20 uh, to 20 uh, outlets but I just it's so retro and like because it's it, it was literally made in the 80s and I just I like the aesthetic and interesting because here you see you can you have spots for small um, small tubes and big tubes as well so that's also interesting and I have this gel electrophoresis for separating and running G DNA gels here it was broken I got it for free this tray but it was broken so all the buffer TA buffer was leaking here but I just used some epoxy and some cloth and I fixed the holes so works perfectly fine if you ask me uh, still better than David's which is just a Tupperware that looks disgusting David you need to fix it please let me buy you <laughs> an Orbo gel electrophoresis tray I have this amazing PCR machine it's super tiny it's the smallest PCR machine out there and it's just it's brilliant in my opinion it's super affordable it's like 120 150 dollars uh, super affordable super easy to use super nice it does not have a heating block on top so you will have to use um, mineral oil but I mean our ancestors did PCR with uh, you know uh, pots and uh, stoves so it's, it's great and you just use uh, USB type C and super easy to program super easy to run uh, amazing thing it's like 3d printed open source it's from uh, Gaudi Labs pocket PCR Then I have this PCR machine it's pro PCR uh, from manifest biology unfortunately they close their business uh, but I still have this PCR machine it's it's pretty neat so high low it's a gradient PCR machine so you can choose different temperatures for each uh, tube and you use Wi-Fi you just throw it from your phone you turn it on uh, use typical you know outlet and uh, power supply and you can just program it from your phone and monitor it and uh, yeah don't look at my passport <laughs> password but honestly I don't care uh, then next uh, he here I have a heating mat I use this to first to culture human cell human cells before I got the chicken incubator so it's basically use it for um, growing the seeds so it's like a little mat and you can control uh, the temperature it's pretty neat to be honest like you can use it instead of any other uh, incubators uh, pretty cheap you can get it anywhere on like amazon a ebay and i used like <laughs> this thing a styrofoam case to put it on top so it would uh keep the temperature then you know just stove magnetic steers i have this yogurt maker it's the most famous yogurt maker in ukraine because uh, when I st still had the lab in my house, in my brother's room, all the journalists and like TV people, when they came to my lab because they heard that it's a yogurt maker, they uh, always wanted me to like, oh, God damn it, show us this yogurt maker. I'm like, I have a PCR machine. Or like, I have, you know, this and that. And they'll just honestly be interested in that. I do not use it, but I keep it. Uh, just, uh, you know, good memories. Uh, and here I have uh, some old microscopes and some old stuff. I do not remember what this is. It was a gift. Um, like there's a tube. It's for some kind of refractology or, or shit like that. But it's just, it's beautiful. I like how it's uh, kind of retro futuristic. I just keep it. Then here we have um, spectrophotometer. It's UV and visible spectrophotometer. I got it when we were doing a DIY vaccine project. Uh, pretty neat, but I never use it to be honest. Then another uh, hot plate steer and photo this photoelectric colorimeter is also, it's just like a, it's super old. I do not use it, but it's just this old piece of equipment. And there's, I think they had more soul, you know, when they look like this. Cause come on, this looks like just like a brick of soap. It's, it's not pretty. I feel like they used to make uh, science equipment prettier and more aesthetic, but whatever. And here I just have some, uh, you know, lab plastic, test tubes, pipette tips, and all the, you know, uh, here I have for cell culture stuff. I still have these huge um, flasks for cell culture, like it's the size of my face. It's when we were doing the real fake meat projects, uh, when we we're growing uh, chicken meat cells, 
to make nuggets still have these big boys you'll see how big they are compared to you know others because here's this one and a typical look like looks like this so it's and they're really expensive too so i don't want to throw them out they're like lab plastic is horrifically expensive it should not cost like this but whatever i have a stock of stuff here uh here i have a liquid nitrogen tank it's empty right now i haven't used it in a while uh it's 36 liters it's huge and it was used on uh, dairy farms to keep the semen of bulls when you because you use artificial insemin well, not artificial but you do it by hand when you inseminate cows uh so yeah i got it too and it's pretty it's it's soviet it's it's old i don't like that it's soviet but it you know it does the work uh i have some science posters here as well this is pathways in human cancer and anna from our lab uh she worked on you know cancer and crispr in korean institute uh, if you haven't watched it we have a podcast about that and she brought this beautiful poster uh, to be honest i do not understand most of it but it's it's just pretty it's a lot of work and it's a pretty poster here we have a hydroponic station right now it's not in use uh but we've been growing some stuff like uh just learning how to grow stuff like um you know basil and just salad leaves and stuff like that but it's pretty neat it's also custom made from tubes uh, so yeah it just stands here for now and now we're gonna enter the main lab area where we actually work just have these tables uh, here I'm also a soldier I'm working on a piece of equipment working on a gel electrophoresis Im imager making a few of them I'm using uh, Sebastian Scotiobus protocols I'll list them uh, down below for those who want to make a pretty cheap affordable and uh, nice you you know um, not a UV you can actually make whatever wavelength you want but it's just using LED lights uh, here I also have some posters they're from Kurzgesagt I mean most of people know Kurzgesagt and I actually stole these posters from the Odin because people just keep sending stuff to the Odin lab and when I was there in Austin I, I stole them because uh, I mean people just send a lot of stuff and you know they can't keep it all but uh, so instead of you know throwing them out I brought them here to Ukraine and it's pretty nice bacteriophage and a complement system uh, so it's nice here I have my first piece of equipment ever uh, this is Amina DNA playground so it's basically a genetic engineering station where you can uh, transform bacteria. It has a hot station, it has a cold station. You use a touchpad to um, do the controls. And here you have like a little um, incubator. It has like a little door and a little key. And here is a little thermostat for little petri dishes. So after you modify your bacteria, you just put it in here and uh, they incubate. And it's actually, it's actually made for kids, for their classrooms. And it was my brother's gift for New Year's in 2017, 2018. It, I started biohacking with this thing, honestly. I didn't have anything else. And I just learned to modify bacteria, make like a little cover colorful bacteria using this thing. I still use it. It's super convenient for bacterial transformation. So I actually, I, I like it. Then going kind of here, I have a bacterial incubator here. It's just a styrofoam box and I use some aluminum tape to keep the uh, temperature. And they're also from Manifest Biology. There's controls uh, so it's a little thermostat so it's nice because it's custom you can use whatever box you want like a cooler or something to keep the temperature and it has a thermal sensor and yeah this is this is where I mostly cultivate bacteria uh, now here I have a few centrifuges I have the small centrifuge it's 10,000 rpms very useful thing super cheap super affordable I mean you can get it from the Odin for like a hundred bucks which is absolutely steal for uh, such thing. I have a bigger centrifuge for uh, 15 ml tubes, mostly used for cell culture and blood stuff. Uh, also like the cheapest you can get from like AliExpress, Alibaba, or you know, eBay. They're uh, like around 150 to 100 bucks. Here I have all my pipettes. I have them in two spots here. 
and I mean pipettes are useful kind of have a collection of them some of them are gifted some of them I did bought so I mean this is the main this is the main weapon of a biotechnologist you just literally use pipette and put small amounts of liquids in test tubes and wait for magic to happen I have a torch here for when I'm working with bacteria and maybe with uh, cells to get rid of contamination because bacteria and yeast they float uh, in the air even if you do clean you know you are also a source of contamination so I just put it here turn it on and work in a sterile uh, area around 30 centimeters uh, pretty nice uh, really cheap and easy way to get rid of contamination here I have my scales just typical cheap scales your local drug dealer uses because uh, they're cheap, they're reliable, uh, and you know, no, I, I don't feel the need for analytical weights. Here I have a magnetic holder. It's for knives, but I put some of the, you know, my stuff uh, for like scapes and stuff like that. And this thing, it's um, it's actually a castration tool. If you watch the video with David, you know he has the same one, and actually stole this idea from him. So it's actually you put like a little um, rubber here. You spread it out and then you, you know, leave it. But it's really useful for when you need to, like, if you have cold stuff, you need to uh, hold something, maybe with uh, uh, some fire. So it's actually a super neat uh, thing. Just have some uh, pipette tips, pipettes, of course, paper towels some pens, uh, sterile loops for bacteria, uh, other pipettes. Here I, I use this, it's actually a deep fryer, uh, but I use it as a water bath because you can choose the temperature. So this is my water bath and this is a pressure cooker and I use it as an autoclave because I mean, no one needs an autoclave, they're really expensive and hard to use. So just get a pressure cooker to sterilize your stuff. Here's a lab notebook I use for microscope stuff. Right now, I don't have a, you know, I do have a camera, but uh, lately I've been using just the eyepiece. And here's kind of like a microscope station with all the uh, microscope stuff for slides and stuff. Uh, you know, different regions, uh, different dyes. And uh, here I have a pH meter and TDS meter. They just kind of hang here. Uh, I don't use a fancy pH uh, meter because you can just get this one for like 10 bucks works as you know you don't need it actually in a lab like this and some old microscope uh, this is an inverted microscope I use for cell cultures this is just a typical uh, normal microscope uh, just another whiteboard and I also have always water uh, distilled water easy to clean the table and uh, ethanol for when I need to, for example, you know, get to the cells, just clean my hands and I can open. And here I have my cells, uh, my own cells, that I've been growing from uh, my fat tissue when I was stabbing myself in the stomach and also uh, using my menstrual blood as well. And this is just a chicken incubator. Uh, it's not a fancy incubator, not a CEO tank or anything. Honestly, works as well like you do not need a lot of money to do this kind of you know stuff amazing thing i had it for like two years never let me down uh here we just have some gloves some masks uh hand sanitizer of course we have this because i'm really bad at you know being safe in a lab environment and not lighting things on fire so i always have this gift from my father after i burned myself and i had to go to hospital and this, I just have these all over. Uh, they look scary, but they're just for trash. This is a fridge I found in a dumpster. It was not working, it was all rusty. Uh, it was an easy fix and I just painted it and I store all my stuff here. Uh, some culture media, uh, you know, antibiotics, petri plates. Um, here is the freezer where I keep my DNA, FBS uh, for cell culture, you know, primers. Uh, and this is a DNA vaccine. I still have it. I keep it as a token. Um, so yeah, it's just a cheap little fridge I found for free. Uh, this is kind of like a sterilizer. It's an old Soviet thing. 
And I actually use it to dry, for example, when I need to dry uh, glassware or something, or I need to th heat things up. I got it for real cheap on like Ukrainian Craigslist for like 10 bucks. Works. Um, rarely use it, but I still have it. Uh, it's mostly for like microbiological stuff and you know stuff like that and it gets really hot so I have to use the gloves to not burn myself again and also here I have on a magnet I have a I have remote control of air purifier because you need the air to be clean when you're working with the uh, uh, cells so also a nice little fix it has HEPA filter and you know when I need to when I'm cleaning the lab so I've cleaned everything and I don't want to you know go back and contaminate the place I just grab it from here I turn it on or off you know and it works it cleans the area and also you can get these things for you know a hundred bucks which is a nice fix so I do not use a flow hood or anything when I work with cells and I almost never get contamination and this is pretty much it. Oh, we also have here um, just a lot of timber. We have here pillows, uh, you know, sleeping bags and stuff like this for when someone needs to spend the night, uh, they can. And yeah, we have parties sometimes and stuff like that. So I hope you like this tour. And, uh, you know, I hope this lab holds because there have been two explosions really close to the lab and you know we have plaster full of the walls um, and stuff like that windows and you know you can see all this like all of this is from the blast it was really close it was about 70 100 meters away and i still have all the dirt here and it's all that's fallen from the blast uh, so if you want to support Yanni Lab, you can subscribe to our Patreon. Uh, we're really grateful to all of our Patreons. Uh, thank you, Patreons, and I'll see you later. And also, if you want to help Ukraine, uh, we always have links on how you can donate to Ukraine and how you can help Ukrainian people, humanitarian aid, support the military, and stuff like that. And if you don't have the money to support Ukraine, you can always go to your local um, protest to support Ukraine. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye.